Hey humans, and welcome to Read to Me, Matt Dunn. I'm Matt Dunn, and I'm going to read to you. We're reading Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Ooh, the book's upside down. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> we are on chapter 13, part 2. Ooh, you know how part two always goes. It's Part two is always better than part one. In my opinion, uh, with, when, see, when it comes to sequels, books, part two, eh, chapters, chapter part two, you know, chapter part one, but that was okay. Chapter part two, hmm. Safi resolved to remain with her father until the moment of his departure, before which time the Turk renewed his promise that she should be united to his deliverer. And Felix remained with them in expectation of that event, and in the meantime he enjoyed the society of the Arabian, who exhibited towards him the simplest and tenderest affection. They conversed with one another through the means of an interpreter and sometimes with the interpretation of looks and Safi sang to him the divine airs of her native country. The Turk allowed this intimacy to take place and encouraged the hopes of the youthful lovers while in his heart he had formed far other plans. He loathed the idea that his daughter should be united to a Christian. But he feared the resentment of Felix if he should appear lukewarm, for he knew that he was still in the power of his deliverer. If he should choose to betray him to the Italian state which they inhabited, if they, if they choose to betray them to the power of the inhibitors, he resolved a thousand. He revolved a thousand plans by which he should be enabled to prolong the deceit until it might be no longer necessary and secretly to take his daughter with him when he departed. His plans were greatly facilitated by the news which arrived from Paris. The government of France were, the government of France were greatly enraged at the escape of their victim and spared no pains to detect and punish his deliverer. The plot of Felix was quickly discovered, and De Lacy and Agatha were thrown into prison. What? The news reached Felix and roused him from his dream of pleasure. His blind and aged father and his gentle sister lay in a noisome dungeon while he enjoyed the free air and the society of her whom, of her whom he loved. This idea was torture to him. He quickly arranged with the Turk that if the latter should find a favorable opportunity for escape before Felix could return to Italy, Safi should remain as a boarder at a convent at Leghorn and then, quitting the lovely Arabian, he hastened to Paris and delivered himself up to the vengeance of the law, hoping to free De Lacy and Agatha by this proceeding. He did not succeed. He did not succeed. They remained confined for five months before the trial took place, the result of which deprived them of their fortune and condemned them to, to, per, to, per, to per, per, perpetual ex exile from their native country. They found a miserable asylum in the cottage in Germany where I discovered them. Felix soon learned that the treacherous Turk for whom he and his family endured such unheard of oppression on discovering that his deliverer was thus reduced to poverty and impotence, became a traitor to good feeling and honor and had quitted Italy with his daughter, insultingly sending Felix a pittance of money to aid him, as he said, in some plan of future maintenance. Wow. Such were the events that preyed on the heart of Felix and rendered him, when I first saw him, the most miserable of his family. He could have endured poverty, and when this distress had been the meed of his fortune, he would have gloried in it. 
but the ingratitude of the Turk and the loss of his beloved Safi were misfortunes more bitter and irreparable. irreparable. The arrival of the Arabian now infused new life into his soul. When the news reached Leghorn that Felix was deprived of his wealth and rank, the merchant commanded his daughter to think no more of her lover, but prepare to return with him to her native country. The generous nature of Safi was outraged by this command. She attempted to expostulate, expostulate, expost, expost too late with her father, but he left her angrily reiterating his tyrann tyrannical mandate. You get it. A few days after, the Turk entered his daughter's apartment and told her hastily that he had reason to believe that his residence at Leghorn had been divulged and that he should speedily be delivered up to the French government. He had consequently hired a vessel to convey him to Constantinople, for which city he should sail in a few hours. He intended to leave his daughter under the care of a confidential servant to follow at her leisure with the greater part of his poverty, which had not yet arrived at Leghorn. When alone, Safi resolved in her own mind the plan of conduct that it would become her to pursue in this emergency. A residence in Turkey was ab abhorrent to her. Her religion and feelings were alike adverse to it. But some papers of her father's which fell into her hands, she heard of the spot where he then resided. <clears throat> she hesitated some time, but at length, she formed her determination, taking with her some jewels that belonged to her and a small sum of money she quitted, she quitted Italy with an, with an attendant, a native of Leghorn, but who understood the common language of Turkey and departed for Germany. She arrived in safety at a town about 20 leagues from the cottage of De, De Lacy. When her attendant fell dangerously ill, Safi nursed her with the most devoted affection, but the poor girl died and the Arabian was left alone. Unacquainted with the language of the country and utterly ignorant of the customs of the world, she fell, however, into good hands. The Italian had mentioned the name of the spot for which they were bound, and after her death, the woman of the house in which they had lived took care that Safi should arrive in safety at the cottage of her lover. That's it for chapter 13. So what did we learn? Um, the old guy's name is DeLacy. The son, Felix, was in love and for some fucking reason helped some dude get out of jail. And that dude was probably like, yo, 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 help me out and I'll let you... Fuck my daughter. Come on. She's young. Get me out of here. He's like, she's nice. You know, I guess. She likes me. I like her. I mean, you don't have to be so weird about it. I do like her. But in no means, this is no retribution. I'm just letting you, I'm just helping you out. I've been helping you out since day one. And I had met your daughter. And, you know, that's a good plus. But then he's all like, yeah, right. Yeah. And then, and then, of course, when he breaks up, he's like, I don't want you fucking marrying my daughter, you fucking Christian. Christian piece of shit. Huh? <laughs> Motherfucker. You know, I wish that there was more times in life where people could just learn lessons like don't trust people, stop being nice to everybody, learn how to say no. Ugh. Never, I'll never break anyone out of jail. I mean, for a price. I'll never do it for a price. I'll do it for free. If I had the power, but you know what I mean. Well, if you want me to keep reading, please check out some more of my videos. Like, subscribe, 
write a comment down below, and then we'll be friends, I promise, because we already are. Friend. You're my friend. <laughs>